This video is on Ethernet standards. IEEE 802.3 is a set of standards and protocols that define Ethernet-based networks. An Ethernet standard describes the properties, functions, and implementation of a specific media type. A media type can provide different speeds of transmission and different types of implementation. An Ethernet standard specifies a specific implementation of a particular media type. Once again, Ethernet standards are defined by IEEE, and IEEE 802.3 is a set of standards and protocols that define Ethernet-based networks. Let's talk example. 100 base T. How this is broken down usually goes from transmission speed to type of transmission and to length or type of cabling. So 100 base T, for example, we got 100 Mbps, which is the transmission speed. And then we got base. Base indicates it uses baseband technology for transmission. And then we have T, length or type of cabling. T stands for twisted pair cabling. We're going to look at both copper and fiber standards. And since copper uses twisted pair, you're going to see it ending with T frequently. First, we have 10 base T. 10 base T standard uses the broadband transmission and has the maximum physical segment length of 100 meters. Repeaters are sometimes used to extend that. Although the repeating capability is now often built into the networking devices used in twisted pair networks. So 10 base T specifies transmission speed of 10 Mbps and can use several categories of UTP cable with RJ45 connectors. Maximum number of computers supported on a 10 base T network is 1024. Then we have the 100 base TX. TX shows the application is utilizing Cat5 UTP cable, where two pairs of copper wires are being used to support speed of 100 Mbps. It uses independent transmit and receive path and therefore can support full duplex operations. A counterpart to 100 base TX is the 100 base FX, which is the IEEE standard for running fast Ethernet over fiber optic cable. FX denotes use of optical fibers in fast Ethernet. Lastly, we have the 1000 base T, 10, and 40 G base. 1000 base T or TX is given the IEEE 802.3AB designation. It specifies gigabit Ethernet over category 5 or better UTP cable. The standard allows for full duplex transmission using the four pairs of twisted cable. The 10 G base T standard specifies 10 Gbps transmission over UTP or STP twisted pair cables, and the standard calls for cable specification of category 6 or category 6A. Category 6, the maximum transmission range is 55 meters, but with augmented category 6A cable, transmission range increases to 100 meters. Category 6 and 6A cables are specifically designed to reduce attenuation and crosstalk, making 10 Gbps speeds possible. The 802.3AN standard specifies regular RJ45 networking connectors. Then we got the 40G base T standard, which provides for four pair balanced twisted pair category 8 copper cabling up to 30 meters. And this is defined in the 802.3BQ standard. It is expected to be used primarily within the data centers. Now let's look at the fiber implementation. First, we got the 100 base FX that we talked about before. The maximum segment length for half duplex multimode fiber is 412 meters, but the maximum increases to an impressive 10,000 meters for a full duplex single mode fiber. 100 base FX often uses SC or ST fiber connectors. Additional fiber option, 100 base SX is now considered lower cost alternative to 100 base FX because it uses LEDs instead of lasers and can be used for shorter distances up to 300 meters. Then we have the 1000 base LX and the SX. SX stands for short mode and this is usually multi mode and LX stands for long range and this is usually single mode. SX, the short range, is intended for multi-mode fiber and has a maximum length of 220 meters, while the long range, LX, runs over multi-mode fiber with a maximum segment length of 550 meters. The standard is popular for intra-building links in office buildings. Then we have 10G base LR and 10G base SR. SR stands for short reach and LR stands for long reach. SR is a multi-mode fiber intended for short range up to 400 meters, it is considered the lowest cost, lowest power, and the smallest form factor optical option available at this speed. Now let's talk multiplexing. Multiplexing option virtual circuits establish a bi-directional communication link between devices and use it for their communication links. Bi-directional wavelength division multiplexing is the transmission of optical channels on a fiber 
propagating simultaneously in both directions. There are several types of wavelength division multiplexing that can be employed during these links. One form of multiplexing optical signals is dense wavelength division multiplexing. This is a form of multiplexing optical signals that replaces sonnet SDH regenerators with erbium doped fiber amplifiers, EDFAs, and can also amplify the signal and allow it to travel a greater distance. The main components of dense wavelength division multiplexing include a terminal multiplexer, line repeaters, and a terminal demultiplexer. Then we have the coarse wavelength division multiplexing. This is a method of multiplexing in which different signals operate at different speeds. The best example of this is cable modems allowing for different speeds of uploading and downloading.